Hello and welcome to the course. This is Gaston College's uh, Bio 161 uh, online course, an introduction to human biology. Uh, I'll be instructor uh, Jason Moyer. And in this course, we'll go over the basic structure and basic function of uh, basic human anatomy. So this video will go over uh, the basics of the course, how it will work, uh, where you would find uh, more important things of the course, of the course syllabus, uh, your tests, your quizzes, uh, and so on. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll begin. All right, what we're looking at now is your uh, Blackboard course. Mine will look a little bit different than yours, just because I'm the instructor, but only slightly. So when you first log in to the course, you'll see the welcome screen, and all the announcements will be here. And because this is a online course, please make it a habit to start checking uh, Blackboard on a regular basis. And that's where I'll put important messages about upcoming uh, quizzes or study modules or when projects are due and so on and also every announcement that I post here will also will be sent to your Gaston College email address that's the preferred email address that the school wants you to use not your personal one like Hotmail or Yahoo or Gmail but your Gaston College email address All right, as you can see there's only one announcement here uh, basically welcoming everyone to the course uh, recommending people view this video that you're watching now and as new announcements are posted, they will be put on top of this one. So all the announcements are kept in a sequential order. All right, we'll go over some course information first. In here, you'll find uh, the course syllabus, which is the a summary of all the details of the course, which we'll go over in a second. A course schedule, uh, the grading policy, uh, participation policy. Uh, this last one here is about the textbook. An important uh, bit of software that you'll need to know how to use is called Mastering A and P, and we'll go over that here in a few minutes. But we'll first start off with the syllabus. This is a pretty standard look for all uh, syllabi here at Gaston College. Uh, title of the course: uh, My name, Jason Moyer. Uh, ways to contact me: My office phone number here, uh, 704-922-6528. Uh, my cell phone, which you can call or text. Usually, text is the most preferred method that most students use. Uh, my email address moyer.jason at gaston.edu. Uh, my office location is in the Roush building on the Dallas uh, the main campus Roush 216. And these are my office hours when I'm physically in my office. All right, a basic uh, course description, uh, basic structure and function of the human body will include details in all the various body systems including cells, tissues, nutrition, uh, and so on. Right here we have our learning outcomes that we will uh, focus on for this course. You know, being able to explain the scientific method, theory and practice, a basic understanding of biological and chemical systems and how they work and how they work with each other, uh, the basic body systems and so on. Details about the course, you know, three credit hours, there's no lab, materials that you'll need for the course, uh, the textbook, uh, Essentials of Human Anatomy and Physiology, the 11th edition by Elaine uh, Miriab. Then the online software that you must have is called Modified Mastering a &P from uh, Pearson Higher Education. The big bulk of the material that we do will be from Mastering a &P. Of all the assignments that you'll have over the semester, there's only two or three that will not be uh, based from Mastering a &P. So you must be able to log in correctly. You must be able to use it correctly. All right, here's a breakdown of how the course will be graded. Each week you'll have a chapter quiz. So there'll be 13 chapter quizzes. They'll be worth 75 points each. So a total of 975 points. In each chapter, each week, you'll have a study module, which is a way to get introduced to the material. Those are 20 points each. Uh, midterm exam and final exam are worth 250 points each. Uh, the discussion board icebreaker, which is a mandatory assignment. I'll discuss that here in a second. That's worth 200 points. And toward the end of the semester, we'll have something called the General Education Outcome Project, or the GEO Project. And the grading scale for my course, 1,800 points and higher would be an A. 1,600 to 1,799 would be a B, and so on. But here are some key things that you need to, well, that you need to focus on. The discussion board uh, icebreaker on Blackboard must be completed by this Friday, January 15th. And all you do is... You go onto the discussion board and you basically introduce yourself to the class as a mandatory assignment that all online courses at Gaston College have. You must go online to introduce yourself 
and you receive 200 points. If you do not do that assignment, you have a very high risk of being removed from the course. So don't let something like that, that's very easy to do, get you kicked out of a class because you forgot to do it. All right, each week we'll have a chapter quiz. The quiz will be available starting on Friday morning at 12.01 a.m., so just after midnight on Thursday, and will remain available until Sunday at 11.59 p.m. So we have all day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. But once that deadline hits at 11.59 p.m. that Sunday night, the quiz will shut down and will go away. So whatever questions that you haven't answered will be submitted as being wrong. And when I say finished by these times, that doesn't mean started by that time. That means it must be finished and submitted before that time. Uh, study modules, we'll have one a week, and one uh, each chapter. It must be submitted by Friday by 11.59 p.m. of each week. After that deadline, if you try to submit it, you will not receive any points, no, will not receive any credit. But unlike the chapter quizzes that go away, the modules are available all throughout the semester. So if you're in you know, chapter 13 and want to review something from chapter 2, you can go back and go over that study module. But you cannot submit it for any kind of points. You must complete one assignment each week to be considered an active participant in the class. If you are not active in the class, I have the authority to remove you from the course. And all graded material will be posted under posted under my grades on Blackboard within 24 hours of the deadline. All right, here's the grading scale that is standard for all classes in the Arts and Science Division. We have a 10 point grading scale. So 90% to 100% is an A, 80 89 is a B, and so on. Here's some other grades that you may get also. All right, students' rights and responsibilities. On uh, the first day of class, the instructor will provide a syllabus and go over the objectives, grading policies, and classroom policies, which is what we're doing right now. Uh, assignments will be graded and returned in a timely manner. Because this class is online, you will get your scores of the quizzes back almost immediately after you take the study module and after you take the chapter quizzes. You will regularly use the text and materials that are stated in the syllabus, like Mastering AMP, like our textbook. And of course, activities will adhere to the college outcomes which it already does. All right, what I have the right to expect from you as a student, you will read this syllabus and ask for clarification if needed. Odds are if you have a question about the course, it's somewhere in the syllabus. So you may not need to ask me directly, just try to look for it in the syllabus first. All right, number two, uh, students will submit assignments when they are that they have completed independently and on time. We'll go over the complete uh, semester schedule here in a few minutes. So you already know, or you, you will know, in this video when everything will be due. And of course number three, you will obtain and use all required text and course materials. All right, student uh, persistence and success plan. If you are having problems in the class, whether you know, attendance issues or, or just performance in general, you know, please contact either me or contact the uh, retention or the, or the student resources uh, division on campus. And we are here to help you. If you're getting behind and you're getting lost and not sure what to do, then ask for help. And that's why we are here. All right, participation policy. The general college policy is to have any student be active 90% or more in the class. If you are not active at that rate, you probably aren't going to do well in any course anyway. But after that point, we have as instructors the authority to remove you from the course. Or if you are consistently absent and not active, we have the authority to give you an F for non-participation. So for this class, because it's online, doing an assignment each week means that you are present for that week. If you just skip chapter quizzes and skip study modules, you won't do well anyway, but if you do that on too much of a regular basis, then you will be removed from the course. All right, makeup policies. There are no makeups for chapter quizzes or exams or study modules. You have plenty of notice when everything is due. So there really is no excuse at all for missing something, unless there's an extreme emergency. If that's the case, then notify me immediately. But in general, there's no makeups for any work that we will do. All right, the course withdrawal procedure. It is up to you as a student to withdraw from the course. You registered for the class, so you, you can withdraw from the class. If you aren't sure whether or not you should stick around, then please talk to me about it as soon as you can. But it is your responsibility as a student to withdraw yourself. 
don't just assume that, well, I'll just stop doing the work and he will withdraw me. Well, I may, but I may not. So it is on you as a student to withdraw yourself. All right, academic dishonesty. Uh, cheating will not be tolerated at all in any manner. And there are some various ways or various methods that we consider cheating. If you are suspected of cheating, you will be kicked out of the class and possibly kicked out of the college in general. So it really isn't worth it to try to cheat in a class like this. All right, electronic devices. When you are taking your midterm exam and your final exam, no cell phones will be permitted at all or any other electronic devices. Right, academic uh, complaints. If you have a concern about either me or the course, uh, here are my bosses. Now you can contact them. Uh, the chair of the science and math department, Dr. Armstrong, her office uh, location and her phone number and her email. And then her boss, the dean of the arts and science division, Heather Woodson, her office, her phone number, her email. All right, here's our tentative course schedule and the chapter numbers and then when the exams will be. So we'll start off with chapter one for this first week, the human body and orientation. And this is what we will cover, the basic chemistry, cells and tissues, skeletal system, muscular system, nervous system. Then the midterm. Midterm will cover all of these chapters here. Then the second part of the course, uh, endocrine system, blood, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, digestive system, urinary, and then reproductive system. Then the final. The final will only cover material from chapter 9 forward. So it's not a cumulative semester long exam. It's only from the second part of the class to the very end. So 9 through 16. All right, the very last page. The very last page of the syllabus is a signature page. By signing this and submitting it to me, you are acknowledging that you agree with everything in the syllabus. So you can't go back later and say, well, I didn't know I could make up something, or I didn't know, you know a test is worth this much points, and so on. So take the time and go through the syllabus and read it. If you need something clarified, ask me. Don't just sign it and turn it in without reading it. So you can either uh, print this out and email it to me, or if you want to, you can just send me an email saying you know, your name and the course section and that you agree to the course syllabus. Well, I will take that also. All right, so that is the course syllabus. All right, here our course schedule. This is every assignment that you have all semester. You know, the assignment name and then when it's due by. For example, the discussion board icebreaker. It is due before Friday the 15th at 11.59. You can do it on Tuesday or Wednesday or five minutes before it's due, but as long as it is submitted before that deadline. If you try to submit it after this date and this deadline, you will not receive many points at all. And as you see, each week we have a study module for that chapter and a chapter quiz. So modules are due by Friday, just before midnight, and quizzes are due before Sunday night, just before midnight. And that's true for the entire course except for here, chapter 13. This week will be a little bit shorter because it's just before our Easter uh, spring break. This is our academic calendar for Gaston College. And as you can see, our spring break starts on Good Friday. So the campus will be closed from Good Friday and all of the following next week. So it includes Good Friday, you know, Easter weekend, and then next week. So I will not have an assignment due on that Friday or on Easter Sunday. Because I just think that's wrong for you to be able or to be forced to do schoolwork on such important days, you know, Good Friday and Easter Sunday. So this week will be a much shorter week. Your module and your chapter quiz are both due before the 24th, just before midnight. So take note of chapter 13. And I'll remind you of this as we get closer to that point also. So no work will be due on Good Friday or Easter Sunday, but they're due on that Thursday, both of these. And see the midterm exam, you will have, it will be available for at least two days, but as we, as we get closer to that, then I'll give you more info on the exam. And same thing for the final, that'll be posted for approximately two days, but we have plenty of time to go over that information before we get to this point. And there is a project that's due called the General Education Outcome Project, or GEO Project for short. That is something that we have to do in this class, and it basically evaluates how well that you have grown in the course, grown in the material. I will post information about that project 
in a few weeks. You'll have two or three months to finish it. It is just due by May 1st. You have at least two months to finish it, if not more. But once that information is posted, I will include information about that project. So this is why you have no makeups for the entire course. You have every single assignment, every single due date given to you right now. All right, these next two, the grading policy and participation policy, these are taken right from the syllabus, but instead of having to go all the way through it, I have it uh, sectioned off so you can just get to that point, you know, word for word, just from the syllabus, how the course will be graded, and also for participation, taken right from the syllabus, but in a nice, easier way uh, to get to that information. And then here you'll have information on how to get started and get logged in with your mastering A and P. And we'll go over more of that here in a few minutes. All right, now we'll get over. We'll go over some other aspects of the Blackboard course. All right, under faculty information, and this info is the same as what's found in my syllabus. You know, my email, uh, my phone numbers, both office and cell phone, uh, office location, uh, office hours, and the way I prefer to be contacted by students is either through text or through email because I always have my phone with me so I will get your email I will get you uh, and I will get your text and there's a record of you contacting me you know, just calling my office leaving voicemail is probably not the best way to reach me because I'm not in there all that often all right lecture notes all lecture notes we put in PowerPoint format and have it grouped together uh, in small chunks of chapters so the first three chapters are here Each one has the chapter name, and then the names in the file name. That's to be true throughout the course. And as we get you know, beyond chapter three, then I'll put up the next group, and then the next group, and so on. But all lecture notes are in PowerPoint. Now, in addition to having the lecture notes, I also have uh, lecture videos. And the reason I have this is some people can read the PowerPoints and be fine with the information, but some people need to hear it explained. So what I've done is I've recorded all my lectures for each chapter. So just like I would give for a normal seated class. So if you just need to print off the notes for chapter one and read those, then that's fine. If you would prefer to watch the video for all my lectures, that's fine also. It just depends on what your personal preference is. But all these cover exactly the same information that the lecture notes do. Is this me giving the lecture for that chapter? All right, we will come back to this in a second. Uh, discussion board. If you have a question about the class, odds are someone else has that question too. So if you have a question about an individual chapter, you will list them here. And please make sure that your question about your chapter is put in the proper uh, thread here. You know, if you have a question about chapter 5, don't put it in chapter 9. Just make sure that you are putting them in the correct thread. If you have a general question about the class, you can post it here. Because I will be checking this, this uh, the discussion board once or twice each day. And here's where you'll put your icebreaker. Remember, this is the assignment that is due this first week of school. So you will create your thread here, title it with your name, some general information about yourself, your name, where you're from, why you're taking the class, if you have any concerns about the class, you can go ahead and post those there. But this is a mandatory assignment. So if you don't do this assignment, it's very likely you'll be kicked out of the course. As we get closer to the GEO project, I'll put that information here. So again, the key places you want to focus on, the announcements, course information. If you have questions, it's most likely going to be in the syllabus. If you have questions about schedules, schedules right here. Let's remember every Friday and every Sunday, typically something will be done or something will be due. Uh, lecture notes and videos, depending on what your preference is. And now we'll get to the where you'll spend the biggest chunk of your time for this class, and that's under Mastering A and P. Now this is how it will look when you first log into it, and where you where you want to go is here, the Mastering A and P home course, because all these other links are are available once you log in. But there are some issues that always come up with Mastering A&P, so we'll go over those now before we get into these links. All right, first of all, Mastering A&P is required for this course. Now, every study module is done through Mastering A&P. Every chapter quiz is done through Mastering A&P. Your midterm and your final are all based from Mastering A&P. Of every assignment that you have this course, there's only two or three that are not done through Mastering A&P. So you must have an access, or you must be able to log in and use that software correctly. Because if you don't, 
you're not going to do well in the course. Secondly, you will need an access code to log in and to use Messering AMP. Now, students fall into one of three categories typically when it comes to this software. You bought a brand new textbook from the bookstore on campus and it has the access code with it, or you bought a new textbook from the bookstore and it doesn't have the access code, or three, you have either rented the book or you bought the book from someplace other than our bookstore, you know, Kindle, Amazon, so on. So we'll go over what you need to do in each of these situations. All right, first, if you bought the new textbook from our bookstore and it has access code, then you are fine. You don't need to do anything. Just make sure that you're able to log in to Mastering AMP, but you log in from Blackboard. Do not go through the publisher's website. Log in from Blackboard. All you need is the access code that's given to you within the book. So you should not have any problems. If you log in from if you don't log in from Blackboard directly, I won't see that you have completed the work. And if I don't see that you've done it, then I'm going to assume that you didn't and you'll get a zero. All right, second, this is the one that's the most involved. If you bought a brand new textbook from the bookstore and it doesn't have the access code, you can return it for one that does have the code, but you must have the receipt in order to exchange the books because you cannot exchange the books without one. If you bought the book using your financial aid, your receipt can be looked up through a database, even if you don't have your paper receipt. Make sure that when you're getting the new book, that it says modified mastering AMP. If it doesn't have the word modified in it, then you're getting something different. So you must be using modified mastering AMP. If you don't have the receipt, then you must buy an access code from the publisher directly. There's no way I can get around that. But if you use financial aid to buy it, your receipt can be looked up. But, but if you pay it out of pocket or if you can't, find a receipt, then you have to purchase it from the publisher directly. And scenario number three, you either rented the book or you bought it from somewhere else other than the Gaston College bookstore, then you must buy the access code from the publisher. And there are two formats you can buy it in. One comes with an electronic textbook and one doesn't. It depends on what you want. The one that has a textbook is a little more expensive than the one that doesn't. But of course, you're getting more information and more resources. All right, so now we cover the the issues that or the issues that come up with mastering AMP. Now we'll get into how it looks when you log in and what everything does. Okay, now we'll get into the uh, area of the uh, website that you'll spend most of your time on in this course, uh, mastering AMP. So when you click on here, this is what you'll see: the various aspects of the software. I will go here to the home page first, and I'll we'll go over each of these here briefly. But all of these links are available from here the main home page and also it's key to remember that you need to log in to Mastering AMP from the Blackboard site don't go to the publishers uh, site at all go directly from Blackboard alright when you first log in this is what you uh, will probably see the calendar look I remember my view is a little bit different than yours as the instructors but always look for my name here on top and the course so Moyer uh, Bio 61 and section K6B in spring 2016 that way you know you're in the right section in here you'll see a, a calendar view of all the assignments and they are color coordinated all the modules will be in this light pink color and all the quizzes will be in this uh, light blue color look at these assignments in the under the assignments link okay, all the assignments will be listed here you can either view this in a calendar view like this or you can also look at it in a list view where everything is listed in chronological order uh, similar to the uh, the PDF file that's on uh, blackboard where it says the course schedule, it's the same thing, but all the assignments are listed here. And there's something that's on here that's not uh, listed in the syllabus. It's called the Introduction to Mastering AMP. It says it's an assignment, but it really isn't an assignment. It's really more of a tutorial for you to get used to the uh, the software and how things work and how how you sort different things, how you move certain things. Basically, how you would answer a study module question. So even though it's not mandatory, I really, really recommend that you do this introduction to Mastering AMP. And it says it's due by the 14th. It's not due at all because it's not an assignment. And it's, it'll be open there for the entire course. So if you want to go back and, and refresh yourself on how to use some of the software properly, but definitely take a look at this before you do you know, the first study module, which is due by Friday, the 15th, 11:59 p.m. Uh, scores so will be where your your scores are for the study modules and for the chapter quizzes. Next, we'll look at the uh, study area of the, of the software. Now, here you're able to take the practice quizzes, practice tests, uh, view animations. 
it's almost like a, a study hall, basically. It's a place to go and practice over the material, and it's broken down chapter by chapter. All right, here's how the study area would look. And up here, you can go to individual chapters all throughout the entire book, and each chapter will have things that are specific for that chapter, you know, reading quizzes, crossword puzzles, uh, art labeling activities, uh, flashcards, glossaries, and so on. Uh, see anatomy, uh, animations here. So it's a very good way to practice the material. And again, this isn't mandatory, but the more practice you get with this kind of information, the better you will get at it. Again, all the links that are found on the Mastering AMP home site are all made available here. The main page is here, the study area right here, the e-text, which is just your textbook but in an electronic form, is available here. Basically, the grade book, the Mastering Scores for your study modules and for your uh, chapter quizzes and for your midterm and for your final and probably the most visited place that you'll go to this course is this very first link here that's why I put it on top uh, the mastering assignments that's where you'll go and find your list of study modules and when they're due when you find your list of chapter quizzes and when they're due so you'll be seeing this page and then this page quite quite often in this course and another reminder this is where most of our assignments will take place for this course so you must be able to Log in to uh, Mastering AMP correctly, you must be able to use it correctly. If you have any questions about it, definitely ask before assignments are due. Don't wait for the day after something is due to email me with a question or a problem. If you have a problem with it, let me know as soon as you can. That's why it's important to, especially this first week, do the assignments before the due date, usually a day or so before the due date. That way, if you do have any problems, you can let me know sooner rather than later. All right, that will conclude our introductory video to this course. If you have questions, always, always contact me. Whether it be about this video or about the class in general or about the material that we cover, you can call me or you can email me or text me. If you have any kind of question at all, don't be hesitant to ask. I'm always here to help students, especially when we don't see each other in person. So if you have a question, definitely ask. Or you can also check the syllabus as a resource, or you can check the uh, discussion board. Between the syllabus, uh, the discussion board, and me, all questions should be able to be answered relatively quickly. Also a reminder, you have three assignments that are due this first week of class. The discussion board icebreaker, due by Friday, just before midnight. And the chapter one study module, also due on Friday, just before midnight. Then your chapter one quiz is due by Sunday, the 17th, just before midnight. I hope you enjoy the course. And of course, if you have any questions, please contact me.